With all the world forecasting the complete capitulation of the European Axis, our heroic wounded, the men who made it possible, enter the Veterans Memorial Opera House in San Francisco. The immediate question is the admission of Argentina to the parley. Ezequiel Padilla, Mexico's Secretary for Foreign Affairs, spoke for the South American Republic, which had signed the Declaration of Chapultepec, Code of Hemispheric Solidarity. Foreign Commissar Molotov argues against the inclusion of Argentina. His plea in Russian is interpreted to the delegates. The proposal made by the Soviet delegation with regard to the question of, of Argentina is that this question, the discussion of this question, should be postponed for a few uh, days in order that we may be able to study. It's the only request made by the Soviet delegation. Tinius, head of the executive and steering committees, followed by Anthony Eden, speaks in favor of Argentina. Ladies and gentlemen, I plead with you to reach a decision in this matter and act now in order that we may get on with our sacred task for which we have met. Uh, those in, in favor uh, of the admission of the Argentine in accordance with the terms previously agreed at our steering committee this morning, will please stand up. Heads of delegation. 31 delegates vote for Argentina, one of the hardest fought questions of the conference. Those against, heads of delegations, please stand up. Only Russia, Yugoslavia, Czechoslovakia, and Greece voted to defer the admission of Argentina. Arriving in Washington, Oscar Ibarra Garcia, the newly appointed ambassador from Argentina, is greeted by South American and United States officials. World unity and security will soon be an established fact. On the final lap of their drive on Berlin, Russian troops under Marshals Zhukov and Rosakovsky send the Germans reeling. Cossacks are in action, too. In every city and town, the Nazis fight back with furious desperation. The foe must be wiped out building by building, street by street. Nazi rear guard action is fanatical as they try to stem the red tide. Watch this soldier. A sniper gets him. A machine gunner smokes out the sniper's nest. As the Russians near Berlin, more and more dead Germans litter the gory road. Fighting their way west, the Reds uncover more horror camps, torture hells, staffed by hand-picked sadistic fiends who had at their disposal medieval weapons, such as this beheading board, to slice the last spark of life from broken bodies. Shortly before the Russians arrived, the Germans went on an insane rampage, slaughtering every prisoner they had time to kill. Remember your enemy. Remember these camps and the scores like them, where the Nazis tortured, starved, mutilated, and murdered people for one sin, the sin that they were non-Germans. Look at this face. Look at the faces of those left alive to mourn. This blackest page of history was written by a debased people, the Germans. No starvation here, of course not. This is the town commander. Another bag of Nazis is moved to the rear and the townsfolk sees a chance denied them for years. The protection of red soldiers is all that saves the prisoners from a vengeful people. Left in the wake of the onrushing Reds is the ruined city of Warsaw, scene of an indescribable five-year reign of terror. The once beautiful Polish capital, seat of culture and learning, was laid waste by the Germans as they retreated. During occupation, even trolleys were for Germans only. The immortal Chopin's home was systematically destroyed in demented defeat. 
But at last, the exiled population, those still alive, are able to return to the shells of their former homes. For once more, the Polish flag flies over Warsaw. History in naval warfare is being made off Okinawa as the task force supporting the invasion decisively smashes land-based Jap air attacks. In almost suicidal attacks, Jap planes run a gauntlet of solid anti-aircraft fire. Hundreds of Jap planes were accounted for in the week-long battle. Navy pinned of Kyushu. The result is almost always the same. Yank marksmanship, sharpened by battle, is deadly. It is truly a curtain of flak that greets any Jap foolhardy enough to venture within range. But the Japs manage some near bomb misses. Jap air power is being rapidly hammered into oblivion. 